when we did a survey, only something like five or ten percent of the people had ever heard of McCloskey. So the the issue was how could we get McCloskey heard of? Because later on we discovered that if anybody knew about McCloskey, eight or nine chances out of ten were that they'd vote for him. Mm -hmm. But they just didn't know anything about him. And meantime, Shirley Temple was the shoe in. Yeah. So it went on that way, and we raised money and and did a lot of I was in charge of volunteers. We closed down Butler and McCloskey, and I organized the volunteers. <clears throat> we thought we were so inept and, uh, and inefficient, we couldn't believe it. What we didn't realize is that, that with all of our problems, that we were running just a classic uh, grassroots, almost now Obama-like campaign, mm -hmm. where you, we just had a thousand people out on the street on, on a Saturday with folders showing uh, that we've identified this person as a, they don't like McCloskey, so don't go t call on them. But here's one, when the time comes to get out the vote, get that person out of their house. Ah, so you were really doing that kind of organizing. Well, we did all that organizing, and we all walked, walked those precincts ourselves. Mm -hmm. And on election day, which was November, because uh, the special election was the only election that day, uh, we all walked precincts. My wife and I walked to precinct, and... Daily City. I remember getting a lady in a pink bathrobe, dragging her out of her house and making her go down and, and vote in her bathrobe. <laughs> but anyway, you had a lot of local support down in the we had, Palo Alto area. Oh from yeah, what we I had understand. we had huge numbers of volunteers and all yeah. of our friends, all of Pete's friends, everybody. It was the great cause, and and let's face it, we all had a really good time. Mm -hmm. uh, I made the deal with Shrek that if I closed down the law firm, I wouldn't have to pay my $1,000 pledge to the campaign because <laughs> I didn't have a 1000 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did that, and we just, uh, and we did everything. We, and we had a, a professional running the campaign, a guy named Sandy Weiner, who was mm -hmm. basically a completely unscrupulous character who we later found out hid bills in the top drawer, and when the campaign was over, presented us with bills we never heard about that we had to pay. Uh, but he was a smart campaign manager. We came up with a really stupid campaign ad. Mm -hmm. And Rye Kelly, who was one of the big guys in the campaign, he and I went out on the street in Menlo Park, or Redwood City, I guess, to test this ad. And we showed it to people on the street and, and said, what do you think the ads? And they look at it and they say, well, it looks like an ad for Shirley Temple. <laughs> <laughs> because we were trying to make sure Sure, it was a two-person race, McCloskey versus Shirley. Mm -hmm. So we had Shirley in the ad. Well, that mm -hmm. was the, that, that took care of Shirley. You but didn't run that ad. No, we didn't run that ad. But we raised money for television, mm -hmm. and, we, and Shrek raised three hundred thousand dollars, the most ever raised for for a congressional campaign at that point. Because the only way to get McCloskey known really was to get him on television, and the television is Bay Area-wide television, so you're paying to reach mm -hmm. 10 people when only one of them can vote for McCloskey. Did he do any knocking on doors himself? or uh, Pete campaigned everywhere, especially in Daly City, because that's where his grandfather had lived. And, and we used to let him go, because we told him that you know if he went to Daly City, he wouldn't, uh, excuse me, not Daly City, Pacifica. That's mm -hmm. where his grandfather lived. And what is called the castle in Pacific is still there. And he'd go off to Pacific and campaign, and we'd say that was fine because he couldn't cause trouble somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, he, he was a fabulous campaigner, but mm -hmm. he would campaign all night like long. I mean, the, the classic story was he went into a bar in Colma. Now, you know, Colma is the cemetery headquarters. Right. <laughs> Nobody lives in Colma, but the but the cemetery workers, I guess, used to go to this bar that's still down there. And so McCloskey's campaigning at a bar in Colma at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, and some guy who's had too much to drink insults him. And, and I think Pete took a swing at the guy. I forget. <laughs> I mean, there was all kinds <laughs> of stuff going on. But that was it. And what was his main um, focus? Was his it the environment? His main focus, and I should have mentioned that at the start, the whole deal was the Vietnam War. OK, Vietnam War, not the environment. It was, this war is illegal. And McCloskey mm -hmm. was a very thoughtful lawyer and a great reader. Mm -hmm. Had actually taken off against our will 
something like four weeks in August when nobody campaigns in August, but he just didn't campaign either, to do research on the Vietnam War. And he'd mm -hmm. come up with a lawyer's view of the war, which was that it was illegal. Hmm. And later, you know, he, when he was in Congress, he fought the Gulf, Gulf of Tonkin resolution, right. which had turned out to be a fraud anyway. Is that, was, is that the basis? Uh, but that he thought that was, you know, the con that the Senate had to declare war. And, and I remember, forget exactly what the brief was about, but he just basically campaigned against the war. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling him, I said, Pete, you know, I'm against the war too, but this is going to kill you in this campaign. And he, he said, I, I don't care. This is one of the worst things the United States has ever done. And uh, if I can't get elected to office fighting this war, I don't want to get elected. Hmm. Well, of course, he was right. I was wrong. I was just chicken. <laughs> I was into the conventional wisdom. Well, it turned out, we later discovered that maybe 80% of the people in the district that had voted for McCloskey disagreed with him on, on some issues, uh -huh. most of them on the Vietnam War. But they voted for him because they thought he was such a fighter and a, a person of such integrity because mm -hmm. he would never back down about any of this stuff. And of course, he had this fabulous war record with the, the second medal you can give him behind the Congressional Medal of Honor, the Navy Cross. In the Army, it's the Distinguished Service Cross mm -hmm. for bravery and bayonet charges in Korea. So he was a war hero. Uh, and you know, people's memory of the of the Korean War wasn't that you know it stopped in 1953, and this is only 15 years later, mm -hmm. uh, 14 years later. So anyway, that was the campaign. Well, I I always have heard about that campaign with that it had a very strong environmental focus. I'm sure that was an part environmentalist of it because were Pete part and of I it. were environmentalists. Mm -hmm. But the central issue in the country at the time was the Vietnam War. And mm -hmm. I think that's what the campaign was decided on. Mm -hmm. Meantime, all kinds of people from Stanford, you know, there, there are people in the state senate now that, like Lois Woke, uh, who cut their teeth in McCloskey's campaign as a young student. Uh, mm -hmm. Becky Morgan got started in that campaign, she told me the other day, ended up as a state senator. Uh, but anyway, it was a crusade. Mm -hmm. and yeah, a crusade, that's a good word for it. Uh, so, and then, then the time they came to get the money, the main thing I remember is that Al Schreck called me into an office in San Francisco, office of a friend of ours, and, and he said, you got to call Dan Koshland, because he knew I, Dan had given us some money, mm -hmm. and Dan was certainly the richest guy we knew, or mm -hmm. I knew in politics, and mm -hmm. I said, you got to call Dan and ask him for money, because he said, I, Shrek said, we've got to raise at, at least 100000 more dollars for television. So he forced me to call Dan Koshin, who was the retired president of Levi Strauss. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dan, you know, I want to thank you for the, he'd given us $200. And I said, but we've got a real problem. Uh, we think we can beat Shirley Temple if we get enough money for television, but it's going to cost a fortune, and we need to raise, raise at least $100,000. Turned out to be 300000 of course, <clears throat> or 200000 for the television, maybe. And I said, I just wondered, you know, do you think we can raise this money and, and beat Shirley Temple? And he said, I don't see any way in the world you can raise that money or beat Shirley Temple. Uh, and I said, gee, yeah, that's what I worried about. And he said, but I'll give you $5,000. <laughs> and I went, $5,000? I remember this very well, because we've talked about it so much that, and Al Shrek, who is sitting where you are right now, mm -hmm. across the desk, goes, ask him for 10. <laughs> now you know why Shrek is the greatest fundraiser. He kept McCloskey in office for 15 years and raised all the money for his presidential campaign. Greatest fundraiser I'd ever known. Well, there was no way I was going to ask Dan Koshin for $10,000. I mean, he'd already was giving me five, 
10 times what I would have expected. I was uh -huh. hoping to get to $500. Anyway, the, the election comes, of course, all of the national media, the television networks come out because America's sweetheart is going to become elected to Congress. Mm -hmm. And they're all down, and she's having her uh, victory party at a hotel at the, in the, at, by the airport. We're having our victory party, which I thought would maybe would be a defeat party. I think it either was the same hotel or certainly was nearby. Mm -hmm. By the way, in the last few days of the campaign, we'd done a poll and it looked like McCloskey was within 1% of, of Shirley Temple. And by this time, the other nine candidates had disappeared. I think the most they ever got was four or 6,000 votes. Mm -hmm. And so Shrek came to me and said, you know, Rye Kelly thinks we ought to borrow $20,000. I said, well, but he said, we've been running this campaign on a page. You go, we didn't spend any money that we didn't have. Except the part that was hidden in Sandy Winder, Winder's. Yes, we later <laughs> had to raise money to pay those bills. Uh, and, and he says, and Kelly wants to run a full page ad in the San Francisco Chronicle which is distributed throughout the district. And we had bought space in the Chronicle because he's the most photogenic guy in the world. You know, and We had uh, something called Mount Rushmore, a portrait of him about like this with a scar down his cheek like he'd been bayoneted in Korea. Mm -hmm. Turned out a dentist had done that at Camp Pendleton. But anyway, you, you never saw any more, more photogenic yeah. or better on the stump speaking. So I, uh, Shrek said, I, I don't want to spend the money. And I said, I don't either. And he said, you know, if Pete loses, who's going to be blamed? You and me. I said, well, we'll just have to skip town, but let's not borrow any money. So we get to the election night. And Sean and I are driving in our car. And since it's the only election around, the returns the results came out very quickly. And it's about 8.30, because mm -hmm. we've been getting the vote out until 8 o'clock when the polls close. And we're driving to the airport. And I forget how much, which percentage, but like 5 or 10% of the vote. McCloskey is killing Shirley Temple. <laughs> so we don't know what to think about this. You know, this is some freakish Palo Alto precinct, you know, and maybe it won't. Well, we get there, and by the time we arrived and within the next half hour, he has killed her. Mm -hmm. So it was a decisive victory. He got f roughly 50,000 votes, and she got 30,000. I mean, wow. it was a complete humiliation. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the national press that have come to put Shirley on television, the networks all want to come interview McCloskey, the mystery man that's beaten America's sweetheart. And I must say, the one thing I thought Weiner was really good at, he told him, screw you guys. You wouldn't pay any attention to us. You came out here and photographed Shirley for the last two weeks while she was running for office. You never paid a bit of attention to us. We went after you. The hell with you. You know, you, you sit there and cool your heels. And he made them wait about an hour before they could come in and interview Pete. In the meantime, we're all going nuts. Uh, and not the smartest thing in the world. One of the members of our group, to be unnamed, uh, told the bartender that all the drinks were on the house. <laughs> so, so we ran up a bar bill of a few thousand dollars. <laughs> Can you imagine free drinks at a, at a victory party? And, my, and Shrek, I think, out of his own pocket paid that bill. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I remember about the victory party is that I went up to Dan Koshlin, who was by himself, standing in a corner. And Dan, you know, was... It was in his 70s at least then. He's certainly the oldest person in the room by 20 years or more. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dan, what in the world ever made you think that we could beat Shirley Temple and give me the $5,000? He said, it never occurred to me that you'd win, which I guess is what he'd said. When yeah. And I said, why did you give us the money? And he said, well, I knew how much it meant to you and Pete. I started to cry. You know, <laughs> I, just, 
I'm a terrible crier. And so, and I, you know, I'm, I'm just watering at the eyes because Dad is, you know, is the greatest, here's my greatest hero in the world, telling me that he'd wasted 5,000 bucks on Pete and me just because he thought we were trying to do the right thing. Then he explained, actually, that when he was a young man, he had gone to the Wilkie Convention in Philadelphia. A friend of mine later wrote a, recently wrote a book about this, uh, in which they chanted from the stands, we want Wilkie, and they got Wilkie mm -hmm. nominated. And he was a big Wilkie guy. Hmm. And he said, he just remembered, and he was working in those days in New York, I think. He said he remembered how much he, um, how much it meant to him when they had stampeded the convention for Wilkie. Yeah. And he just thought, well, I was the same age and that he was at that time yeah. and he ought to support us. Yeah. 